Welcome to using grids and guides in InDesign. To get us started, I'm going to just remind you of a few ways you get started with setting up your page. To set up a page, go to File, New, Document. Much of the time you will receive settings or templates from your print press that will indicate to you what size you should use, where your margin should be, and what your bleeding slug will be. So most of the time you don't need to worry about what should these be. I also suggest um, using multiple columns here that's going to give you a baseline to design. Uh, five to seven is a good number, but talk to your professor to see what they think the best choice would be. I'm actually going to cancel this because I already have a document set up for us to look at. So this document is set up as a 60 by 120, so it's more of a broadsheet setup. I've set up a bleed line, which is this red line, but I don't have any margins. That means my text can go right to the edge of the page, and if I want my photos to stretch to the edge with no white, I would want them to go to the bleed line, at least to the bleed line, and perhaps a little bit beyond that. So this is kind of the base of my design and I have these six columns. Um, that does not mean that all of my text needs to go down in these six columns. In fact, it's preferable that it doesn't, but this just gives me a baseline for setting up my page. Let's take a little look at how we can view document grids. Let's go up to view grids and guides and we're gonna make sure number one we have snap to document grid checked that's gonna help us here in a little bit and I want to show our document grid I'm gonna zoom in for us and next I want to show you how I've set these up in my preferences so if I go to InDesign preferences and grids I have a grid line every one pica with one subdivision, which basically means that each of these squares are one pica square. Um, that's a pretty standard unit of measurement for newspaper design. Always check what style guides you're working with when you're designing. Um, some magazines might use a half a pica as their standard measurement and then use larger measurements to denote space between different packages on the page. And right now my grids are set to be up in back of my design, but we'll change that later on and I'll show you why. And hit OK. I'm going to Command 0. And this is what we have to work with. That can occasionally be overwhelming, so just remember you can always hit the W key and do your print preview. Let's go down to the design I've already started on and we can show you how you can use these grids to work on spacing on your page. So as you look here we've got the beginnings of a page design set up and we have some tweaks that we need to do to just check our spacing. So remember we want our goal is to have every object on the page be one pica apart. So we're going to get started with that. And text can be a little bit difficult because you know where are you going to base it from? Generally speaking you want to use the baseline of your text and so I'm going from the bottom to the top there. And notice this is not quite hitting even on this guide so I'm going to need to kind of eyeball this one. Get about there between there and there would be about a pica. And same thing with my dominant photo. And so I can just go along and I also want to make sure that my objects are aligning. There's several ways you can do that, especially in a case like this where I may not have a guide rule sitting there. I can pull one down from my rulers like this. 
And the reason why it's kind of snapping, this would be an instant where that's snap to document grid is not helpful. So I might want to release that so I can get this placed where I like it. And just size this photo down. So to size everything on my page, I would just continue to zoom in and navigate and kind of work my way down the page to make sure that everything is one pica apart. Now I mentioned what would be the occasion for bringing those guides to the front. Well, one of the reasons why I'd want to bring guides to the front is if I wanted to put something, say, over a photo or look at measurements without the photo getting in the way. To do that, just go again to my Preferences Grids, uncheck Grids and Back. Now you can see it's overlaying on the photo. So if I wanted to create some frames here, I could now measure between those using that grid on top. So that's helpful again to just get an overall look at your design. I'll just do a temporary color there. And we'll copy our box. So now I know those are one pica apart. And if I want to change any of my layout and measurements at this point, I certainly can by going to Layout, Margins, and Columns. This would be where I would change my margins and my columns. Most of the time those are pretty standard, so you don't need to change those once you have them set. Another tip if you are pulling guides from the rulers, notice you get that double arrow, that's your cue. To pull one across a double page spread, Hold your command key down and it will pull across both pages of a spread. That's helpful. And as always, the W key will allow you to view your design without the distraction of the baseline grid. And that is all for Grids and Guides.